the one who, who acquires the properties, the attributes, the characteristics that have been described just now in this surah, this person will truly very very soon be very content. This world is all about being content. Why do people run after money? They'll be content. Why? What, what's gonna make you so content? It'll be that car, it'll be that house, it'll be that wedding, it'll be those clothes, it'll be something you think that's gonna make you content. Allah says, you develop this, I'll give you that what you're running after. You're really not running after money in reality. Allah is teaching us, what are you really running after? Contentment. You just want to be happy. And you think money is going to make you happy. And Allah is teaching you something more. You do this, you seek Allah's face, and I'll give you that what you're running towards. وَلَا سَوْفَ يَبْلَىٰ Similarly, Allah says, أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنَّ الْقُلُوبِ Know that by remembering Allah, the hearts attain satisfaction. Hearts will be at unrest until they attain the remembrance of Allah. Then they will be finally tranquil, satisfied. The, the itch is gone. The, the, you know, the restlessness is gone. SubhanAllah. وَلَا سَوْفَ يَضَّى The lamb, two more comments and we're done with the surah inshaAllah ta'ala. The lamb is actually in, in the Arabic language can be used to illustrate an oath that hasn't even been said. Meaning, وَلَا سَوْفَ يَضَّى According to Ibn Kathir rahimahullah even says, وَتَاللَّهِ لَسَوْفَ يَرْضَى بِمَا نُعْطِيهِ مِنَ الْكِرَامَةِ مِنَ الْكِرَامَةِ وَالْجَزَاءِ الْعَظِيمِ And I swear by Allah that He will soon be very very pleased because of what we give Him from the honor and nobility and the most noble and beautiful of rewards. But the meaning تَاللَّهِ I truly swear by Allah is understood when you just begin with لا. Allah doesn't just say وَسَوْفَ يَرْضَى He says وَلَا سَوْفَ يَرْضَى What's the benefit of swearing? You swear when somebody doesn't believe you. Allah says, believe it, you will be happy. I'm telling you, you'll be happy. Why do you talk like that? When somebody says, I don't know, what I'm running after is making me pretty happy, I think. This person needs to be told, I'm telling you, I swear to you, you will be content. You won't have any other desires. You will not be in any unrest. You will find tranquility in yourself. وَلَا سَوْفَ يَضَّى And soon he will attain contentment. So in the conclusion of the previous surah we read, وَلَا سَوْفَ يَرْضَى Those were the last words we read in the previous surah, that soon he will be pleased. إِلَّا بْتِغَاءَ وَجْهِ رَبِّهِ الْأَعْلَى وَلَا سَوْفَ يَرْضَى With the exception of the one who pursues the face of his Lord or, or his, of his Master, meaning he is in pursuit of Allah's contentment, and that's the only goal before them, this is the one who will finally be truly pleased and satisfied. A ghanim in the worldly sense is someone who's so rich, they don't need any money, they don't need anybody's help, they can do everything on their own. This is ghina. In the previous surah we learned, Allah Azza wa says, وَمَا يُغْنِي عَنْهُ مَالُهُ إِذَا تَرَدَّى His wealth will not be able to make him ghani. His wealth will not be able to make him free of need. He thinks his wealth is gonna make him free of need, but when he falls into the ditch, his wealth will not be of any benefit. This is what we learned in the previous surah. So we're learning here that wealth will not make you free of need. In this surah, the positive side. Okay, so well, wealth is not going to make one free of need. So where is, how are we going to become free of need? Allah Azza wa says in this surah, وَوَجَدَكَ عَائِلًا فَأَغْنَى He found you in a desperate state, and He made you free of need. So it's not mal that gives ghina, it is Allah that gives ghina. Allah makes someone free of need. Allah takes care of their needs. So the, the pursuit of wealth is being contrasted with the one who pursues Allah. And that's why in the previous surah we found in its conclusion, ibtigha'a wajhi rabbihi, the pursuit of the face of his master, as opposed to the pursuit of what? As opposed to the pursuit of wealth. So, going further, we find in the previous surah, Allah Azza wa mentions similarly again about mal, الذي يؤتي ماله يتزكى, the one who gives his wealth in order to cleanse himself. Now what are some avenues in which you can give wealth? They are discussed in this surah, فَأَمَّا الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقْهَرْ وَأَمَّا السَّائِلَ فَلَا تَنْهَرْ As for the orphan, as for the one who asks, and we're going to talk about the injunctions of Allah, don't turn them away, don't humiliate them, don't you know, embarrass them, etc. Now Allah says, now the human being will be informed. What did he make a priority out of? And what did he put on the back burner? That's the translation I'll prefer here. بِمَا قَدَّمَ What did he give priority to? What took taqdeem for him? What was priority number one? What took precedence? وَمَا أَخَّرَ And what could wait? What were the things that you put on the back burner? The crime of the human being isn't necessarily that he doesn't do a good deed. The human being says, it can wait. I can do it later. The crime of the human being isn't necessarily that he doesn't leave sin. He says, I'll leave it later. 
Or, you know, right, let me do what I want right now. I'll do that later. I have time. Taqdeem and ta'khir, not the grammar one. The one for life. Human beings will be thoroughly informed. What were your priorities? What did you put ahead? What came first for you? What came later for you? Bima qaddama wa akhar. The other meaning of qaddama wa akhar in tafsir juz amma I mentioned also. Qaddama also means what you've sent forward. You've done deeds, you've done works, and every one of them are waiting for you. Our deeds are waiting for us. Kullu nafsin bima kasabat rahina. You've sent collateral over. You've sent deeds over for processing. And you're gonna meet those deeds on judgment day. I don't meet my deeds now, I just do them now. I will meet them then. Wa wajadu ma amilu hadulan. Then you're standing face to face in front of their salahs. If your salat was lousy, you'll be standing in front of a lousy salat. Staring right at you. That's what it's gonna be. If you were lying, cheating, backbiting, angry, arrogant, condescending, whatever you were, be looking right at you in the face. And then you're gonna say, Mali had al kitab. That's, that's the reality of it. Bima qaddama wa akhar. What did he make a priority out of? What did he put on the back burner? This is one of those life transforming ayat. The human being will be thoroughly informed, this was your priority. This is what you spent time on. This is what you did with your free time. This is what you thought can wait. You had all these dreams, I want to memorize the Qur'an. What did you do for it? How many seasons of how many TV shows did you watch instead? That was a priority for you. What do you wanted to memorize? Oh, but it can wait though, inshallah, one day, when my heart is purified, then I shall start. You know? بِمَا قَدَّمَ وَأَخَرْ بَلِ insan. No, no. Yes, on that day the human being will be given thorough news, but it's not like the human being is blind now. Rather the case is that the human being عَلَى نَفْسِهِ Against his own self بَصِيرَ Is fully insightful. There is one person that knows so much about you that nobody else knows about you. And besides Allah, and that's you. You have an insight into who you are, what your flaws are, what your limitations are, what your capabilities are, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, what opportunities you avail, what opportunities you get lazy about. You know that about yourself more than anybody else. And you and I decide to lie to ourselves. We just decide we're not going to have an honest conversation with ourselves about ourselves and about ourselves with Allah. We don't want to have that honest conversation. For some people, all they want at the end of their life, what is success to them? Maybe I'll own a house. That's success for them. Maybe if I have this much money, that means I have success. Maybe if I got married to this one or that one, maybe that's, that means I have success. But I go back to what I started with. There are some people who are happy with doing just the minimum. Just the minimum. But I am here to tell you the young people in the audience today, Allah has blessed you and I'm telling you He expects great things from you. He does not expect the minimum from you. There are so many Muslims, the only thing left of Islam is their name. That's the only thing left. They don't care about Salat, they don't care about Halal and Haram. They're far from this deen. What can I do to further this deen? What can I do to... I shouldn't just be happy that so many people come and attend Jumu'ah. Does that mean everybody's heart is clean? Does that mean that we, are enough, we don't need any more reminder? Is that what that means? Or are there evils in our society? Are there youth that are turning towards drugs? Are there young people that are just living their life for no purpose? All they do is play video games and watch movies and go to sleep. And the, if you ask them for a purpose, they say, I want to graduate and get a job. Is that a goal? Get a job? Allah gave us such higher goals. Your job itself is a means to a higher end. But you know what? We are living in strange times. The people who need the da'wah the most today are the Muslims themselves. But even if you get a good job, but you don't do your job, you got the job, but you show up late every day. You got the job, but you don't finish any projects. You're sitting there at the desk wasting your time. You're gonna lose that job. Somebody else will come and do it for you. You will not keep that job even if you qualified. Qualifications are not enough. You have to do the work. Allah Azza wa Jal is keep giving all of us. He's already qualified us. We are people of La ilaha illallah. We are already qualified. But that doesn't mean we're doing the work. If we don't do the work, if we don't make, we don't concern ourselves, 
If we don't care, then you know what's going to happen. In yastabdil khayrakum, thumma la yakunu amthalakum. You turn away and Allah will replace you with a nation other than yourselves. And they will not be like you. They will not be lazy like you. And those are when, Mus when young Muslim people have real iman. When young Muslims have real like, strength in their belief, then they, can, they have the power to change the world. They have the power to make the world a, a better place. But when young Muslim people don't have real iman, they don't have real conviction, then they are a waste of space. They are a waste of society, a waste of a generation. The only thing in their life, the, only, the biggest, the, the most important thing in their life is when is the next movie coming out? The most important thing is when is the next iPhone coming out? The next most important thing is, man, I wish I had that car. That's it. Your life doesn't go any further than that. My teacher used to say that Islam is similar to climbing a mountain. You know, when you're climbing a mountain, you throw a hook and you climb. If you throw a hook not very high, then you will only reach that much. You can't reach any further. If your goal is money, if your goal is a six pack, if your goal is a car, if your goal is a promotion, if your goal is entertainment, if your goal is girls, whatever your goal is, then you're only going to get that, you won't get anything else. But if your goal is something higher, to serve something more than yourself, you don't live a selfish life. You want to live for the sake of Allah and for the benefit of others. That's how you want to live. Then you will benefit yourself definitely, but you will be honored in the eyes of Allah because you set your goal much higher. Our deen in this beautiful ayah, Allah Azza wa describes it, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي This is my path. A sabil is a path. And you know what? Allah did not say in this ayah, قُلْ هَذَا دِينِي This is my deen. Tell them this is my religion. This is my Islam. This is my truth. This is my book. He didn't describe it with any other language except this is my path. And all of you know a path is like a journey. So Islam itself, Islam itself is being described as a journey in this ayah. What does that mean? That means you have in any journey you have to make progress, right? So even if you take one step, you are more closer to your destination than the day before or the step before. Every single moment you are making progress in a journey. And in this ayah, Allah's Messenger says Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this religion of mine and this religion of yours and ours, Islam is a journey, which means I am supposed to do something more for this deen than I did yesterday. And I'm supposed to do more tomorrow and more tomorrow and more tomorrow. I'm supposed to go further.